Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and what I got here is the Sony FE 24 to 240 millimeter lens. It's an f 3.5 to 6.3 variable aperture, and the lens has optical steady shot to help stabilize things. And you can see here it's mounted on my Sony A7R, full frame camera, full frame lens coverage. All right, and this is what it looks like with the lens hood in the closed position. So I'm just gonna take that off, take the lens cap off, like so. Here's what she looks like mounted to the camera a little closer. And when you zoom it, let me show you this, it rotates with only a quarter turn. All right, so I'll just show you what it looks like from the front here. And then from the side, you can see how significant the zoom is. So you can see with just that much it goes from 24 all the way to 240, only a quarter turn. Now it's a little bit tight, the lens is quite heavy. It's actually 1.72 pounds or 780 grams. The lens consists of one ED element and five spherical elements which help with you know distortion and fringing and all that all that good stuff basically lens flaws. You know, right here, this is the focus ring. So you can switch to manual and you have this nice ring here. The dampening feels pretty good. Not bad at all. It's a 72 millimeter filter diameter. That's what size you're looking at there. You can see it right here, 72 millimeter. The minimum focus distance is only 19.7 inches or 50 centimeters, which is really good. So when you're zoomed out to 240, you can have something, you know, 20 inches away and focus on it, which is, you know, gives you a little bit of magnification. Not bad, 0.27 or something like that magnification. I can't remember the exact quote for that, but um, that's a nice feature. And it also will allow you to get the background extremely out of focus, which I'll show you in the lab scene in a second. Uh, it has a seven bladed aperture, so the bouquet will look nice and round. You'll also see that in the lab. It's dust and moisture resistant, so it has a little bit of gasket sealing, things like that. On the crop factor camera, this thing would work out to 36 to 360 effective, you know, if you were to use it on the A6000, for example. So 360 millimeter with optical steady shot is quite awesome. All right, so the cost of this thing, it goes for 998 US and it goes from 24 to 240 millimeter. So for the cost and the range, that's a very fair price in my opinion. So when I put this in the lab, I wasn't expecting, you know, the best optical quality. You know, I wasn't expecting Zeiss optics when you consider the range. I mean, 20, it's got so many lens elements, 17 elements in 12 groups. So that's a lot of glass, you know, that the light has to travel through and you don't get something for nothing. So basically this lens suffers from a little bit of distortion at various focal lengths, as you'll see in the lab. It has a little softness in the corners and you know, at 240 millimeter, you could definitely notice that a little bit. But overall in the real world, the results are great and the versatility is awesome. So you can pretty much just stand there and take a wide angle shot and then zoom in and take a telephoto shot from the same exact position. And for the price range, you can't beat it. I mean, that versatility and that cost for full frame coverage is pretty remarkable in my opinion. So I'm gonna give this thing a pretty high rating overall, even though the optical quality is definitely not Zeiss standard or even G lens standard, but you know, the price reflects that. It would be much more if it was. So moving on, let me show you what this thing can do in the real world and in the lab. All right, buddies, here we are in Lightroom 5, and we're just gonna go over some real world sample photos. So this first shot, I just wanted to show you the separation that can be achieved. And what we're doing is we got the lens at 240 millimeter and a car happened to drive past, which created a cool out of focus bouquet effect on the tail light, which you can see here. So this is wide open at F6.3, 240 millimeter. Here is just, I wanted to give you a quick run through of what you can see at different focal lengths from the same exact spot. This is at 100 millimeter. The first shot was at 24 and this is at 240 millimeter. So from the same spot, you can get this, this, and this. And here's just a shot of a fence at 240 millimeter at very close range. I was over at Quick Check the other day. I want to show you uh, one more time the focal length. So here's 24 millimeter, and this is about 33 millimeter, 48 millimeter, 
69, this is 101 millimeter, this is 152, and this is 240. So you can see quite the range from the same lens. I wanted to show you the out of focus of the mailbox and the bright sun. Looks quite good in my opinion. And here's another uh, shot wide open. You can see a little bit of distortion, but 24 millimeter on the full frame A7R, which is what I was using, you know, is very wide. And then I zoomed in a bit to, you know, illustrate the telephoto compression that you can get. And just by moving a little bit left and right, you can drastically change the composition. And, uh, you know, the lens performed well. You can see here the sharpness is not that bad, wide open at f6.3. I mean, it's not Zeiss quality, but it's pretty good overall, especially for, you know, the cost and everything, all those lens elements. So I took some, we got some flowers on the deck and they make great test subjects for a number of reasons, but here you can see the separation and, and in the bright sun too, harsh lighting, you could see how it handled the high contrast and it, it did a good job. This is a cool shot because the leaves are lit up at a certain time of day and it creates this cool background effect and um, you know it, it's quite good. 194 millimeter. I was shooting through some flowers here trying to get a good shot of the one in the background and uh, this angle seemed to work out pretty good. So I was pretty happy with this one. This is an abandoned pool. This is at 24 millimeter wide open f6.3. So like I said, I'm just trying to show you some real world shots here, guys, so you can get an idea of what you can do with this lens, all right? I'm gonna go over the lab photos and give you more detail on the sharpness and, and things like that. So just stay tuned for that. This is just real world stuff. So looking at the pool here, zoomed in, I just moved the camera down a little bit and changed the composition. You know, at the minimum focus distance, you can really get some nice effects. And this is 240 millimeter at the minimum focus distance on just a weed. And here's another angle of it, same thing. And here's the pool, two feet deep, don't dive. And you can see the pool's in rough shape. People just uh, have destroyed it. One of the gates is locked up, but the gate I went through, somebody kicked it open, I guess. And uh, it has a deep end. It's filled with garbage and stuff. You can see here the distortion, in particular, at wide open 24 millimeter on the bottom there. That's supposed to be straight horizontal line, and it's clearly not. Uh, looking down at the ladder, I kind of liked how this one came out. Zoomed in a little more. And this is inside, ISO 6400, low light. And Jace was on his swing, just hanging out. I actually put the portrait effect on, so it smoothed the skin a little bit on the face. And I was pretty happy with the result here. Not too bad for ISO 6400, really low light. Actually, JPEG mode. So that's what you get. It's not that bad. Here is the town of Liberty. And the dynamic range is pretty high in this scene. It was shot in JPEG mode. And this is 24 millimeter. Notice here on the left side, you can see the church steeple at 24 millimeter. So then I zoomed in just so you can see what you get at 240 millimeter. And that's impressive. So that's the kind of versatility you're getting. Zoomed out a little bit, changed the composition, made it a little more interesting. And then another angle of the town there was a water faucet and the tree behind it just looks so cool out of focus so I went for a shot of that as well came out pretty good this lens works great guys look 208 millimeter so you could see like this is 49 millimeter this is 240 millimeter from the same exact spot so that's the kind of versatility I'm talking about and as I was driving around I found this lake and these guys were fishing and as soon as they saw me they beelined it and they started rowing to the you know out of my sight pretty much but I got a shot of them anyway check this out let me zoom in there they are so you can see the focus isn't tack sharp but this was in JPEG mode so there's a little bit of noise reduction and everything and they were moving a little hazy as well and this one I just took a shot of this log here so you could see the boats out of focus a little bit oh yeah I had to bring bones to the vet he's got a watery eye he was in the car here when I was taking those photos so when I turned around this is what I saw such a good boy. Here zoomed in to 240 millimeter. And uh, I think that shot came out great. I'm really liking this lens. I mean, these are keepers. You know, a lot of these shots are keepers, in my opinion. This one came out really good as well. I really like that. Just found this old farm, the thing, the barn that was falling down. Zoomed out, took another frame, completely different composition, but I also like that one. And then to the left of that, I saw this cool S curve. So I took that. And then I went down to the Green Bridge, 
and I took a couple test photos there as well. You know, with the same lens, just walking around, you can get unbelievable different compositions, different types of shots, and uh, I was happy. Happy with this lens. Looking at the water. There's a fisherman. So here's on my deck. I was just showing you the railing. Uh, kind of makes a cool depth of field, you know, Z type pattern. And um, I thought that came out pretty cool for a demonstration. You could see the layering effect. And here's zoomed in more. So this is at 69 millimeter. This is at 150 millimeter. And you could see how the separation in the background and the foreground vary, creating that layer effect. And then I just zoomed in all the way to 240, took some wind chime shots. Shooting into the sun, I was pretty happy with the results. The white balance was a little bit off, but I was shooting JPEG, so, you know, what are you going to do? Um, and you can see they look kind of silhouetted there. Again, the results are great. I mean, th this lens is really good um, considering, you know, the cost and uh, versatility of it. It's not perfect, though. Oh, we put a new playground up. I was pretty happy with that. Zoomed in. Took all different kinds of shots of this playground with this lens. You zoom in, you can get shots like this. Cool depth of field shots like that. Wide angle shots like that. And, if, and you can't put any playground together without a radio. Come on now. Look at that background. See the trees, the rocks. It looks great. And the uh, notice how the that's a, on the bottom right here, that's a 48-inch level. And you can see how that thing trails off with the uh, you know perspective and depth of field and whatnot. So here's another test scene. This is a more hardcore test scene. Um, and notice at 24 millimeter when shooting raw, look at the corner here. See that corner? It's pretty bad. My guess is they'll come out with an update to fix this raw file on camera because that's borderline un unacceptable vignette. But um, if you shoot in JPEG mode, it looks like that. I mean, look at the difference. That's raw, that's JPEG. It pretty much repairs it completely and the results are very good. So let me zoom in and show you how sharp they are. I focused over here on the right hand side and it looks great. Real world, it looks great. Clearly not as sharp in the corners. You know, you could see the softness. You could see the sharpness trail off. But, you know, in the real world, it's like, who's staring at the corners? You know, you're trying to get, take in the scene and stuff like that. And overall, the picture looks great. So zoomed in a bit more, this is at 50 millimeter, and this is raw, and that's JPEG. So you can see how the distortion is fixed and other lens flaws. Here's 100 millimeter, same thing, a little bit of distortion. And here's 154, that's JPEG, a little bit of distortion there. And then here's 240, and you can see that has pretty significant distortion. But overall, again, the results are really good. Sharp, sharp. And then zoomed in at the sign, 240 millimeter. Looks great. This is a raw file. And you can see, well, that's an excellent result. This is the Sony Next 6, and I wanted to show you how it compares to the A7R. So this is 24 millimeter in raw quality on the Next 6. This is 24 millimeter on the A7R, raw quality. All right. So let me show you what 240 looks like. This is 240 on the Next 6 crop factor camera, and this is 240 on the A7R. See the difference? 240. Sorry about the moving cars and stuff, but so you can see it uh, gives you quite an advantage on zoom. <laughs> All right, so here we are in the lab, and I just wanted to show you quickly the distortion in particular and the sharpness up close. So, you know, the real world photos are ultimately what matters, so I'm just gonna go through this quick. Now, notice the wood 
below and I have the pattern on there, you know, the cross section so you can see the sharpness uh, fall off, but also the perspective distortion and the parallel lines and whatnot. And look how much distortion this has versus JPEG mode when the camera corrects it all. My Lightroom doesn't have the profile yet. So this is what I wanted to show you. So, I mean, it's not horrendously bad. You can correct this in Lightroom if you shoot raw, but it's noticeably bad, as, you know, and worth pointing out. And then the JPEG corrects it. So at 24 millimeter, millimeter wide open, you know, the lens looks pretty good. Even in the corners, it's not that bad, but this isn't the very, very corner. As you can see from the full frame, you know, the very corner is all the way up here. So the lab, you know, isn't the best for super wide angle on full frame but you still can get an idea of the corner sharpness and how it falls off because you can see up here in the very corner you know the letters and stuff start to get a little blurry and same thing here but if I go down to f8 and zoom in on that one let me show you the corners now you can just see all the detail it's super sharp so as long as you shoot at f8 you know the corners do sharpen up quite a bit and that's one thing I wanted to show you in particular. So zoomed in a little bit, there's very little distortion around 33 millimeter, 35 millimeter area. As you can see here from this is the raw file and this is the JPEG file. Uh, sharpness is not too bad though across the board as you'll see. Even in the corner it's pretty good. So again, I'm pretty happy with that. Then zoomed in at like 50 millimeter a little bit of distortion comes back. Notice that that's the raw file and that's the JPEG correction. And if we zoom in on it, I'll show you how the corner looks. And it looks okay, but you can see here some softness, the lettering here is starting to get a little blurry. You know, this would sharpen up a lot of f8 for sure. This is at f4.5. It's a variable aperture lens, so that's going to vary as you zoom in. For example, I'm at 70 millimeter and now it's at f5.6. All right. So I'm just going to continue. You can see here there's a little bit of distortion. It's going to show you that. Zoom in a little more. It's 100 millimeter. Pretty significant distortion at 100 millimeter. And then zoomed at 154 millimeter. We also still have a little bit of distortion. Not that bad. Here at 240 millimeter, we have a little bit of distortion. You could see there. JPEG versus RAW. The sharpness is not too bad, but it's not terrific. Let me show you what it looks like here in the center. You can see the detail here in the hairs on the uh, string. All right, guys, so the bottom line for this lens is I would love to have it. I mean, 24 to 240 millimeter is so versatile that it makes it a great companion for, you know, vacation, hiking, or just every day out and about when you don't want to carry your whole camera bag you know clearly prime lenses have their place and you know when you need to do something or you need a special depth of field more optimal corner sharpness things like that you break out the primes but when you got a lens like this it's like especially with a full frame camera you can get some killer quality photos of pretty much anything 998 us is the price and it has optical steady shot so it's got a lot going for it in my opinion for the price range especially when you consider the cost of a lot of the other Sony lenses. I mean, they're not exactly cheap. So for this price, you really get something worth the money, without a doubt. And, um, you know, I enjoyed using it. I wish I had the money to keep it because this is exactly what I would grab if I was going to anything, really. If I just want to bring one lens, I don't feel like carrying a heavy bag around. These days with the kids and everything, I'm carrying a baby, blah, blah, blah. So I would give this lens a good solid four stars. If you want pro quality optics, don't get this lens. Go for the Zeiss, go for Primes, things like that. This is just a, a really good option, you know, and, and it's fairly priced in my opinion. So, all right, guys, thanks again for checking out this review and please feel free to ask questions below. Be sure to subscribe and have a wonderful weekend. <laughs>